So very good evening to you all and hope you all are doing well. Uh, today we are going to discuss a very important uh, topic of uh, CGM uh, and how to apply it in uh, clinical practice. We are going to look at the understanding and interpretation of a CGM report. We'll be talking about the different CGM metrics. We'll look at the continuous glucose monitor targets. And of course, we are going to look at how to interpret a ambulatory blood glucose profile with some case-based scenarios and some of the examples which had appeared in the previous specialty certificate exams. And uh, as you all, all know, this is a continuation of the part one of my CGM, which is uh, now a part of the paid subscription lecture series. So if you want a subscription of the lecture series, you all can always get in touch with me. So let's start right away by looking at this AGP report. So basically, when we look at the AGP report or the ambulatory blood glucose profile report, it has three main components. In the first part, we see the metrics and the targets. Basically, it shows the glucose statistics and targets, and it shows the time in ranges. Then we are having the ambulatory glucose profile which shows the 14 day blood glucose readings. Basically over the last 14 days when the sensor has been worn by the patient. And in the last part, we are looking at the daily glucose profiles in which we see the day to day variations in the blood glucose. Now I'm going to talk about each and every component step by step. So I will be explaining what all these numbers mean. But this is how an AGP profile report looks like. Now, across various sensors, more or less, the AGP report is standardized to make it easy for reference. So now let's look at the different sections step by step. Let's start with looking at the first section more in detail. What does this bar mean? So this green zone is the target zone. And this is what the readings fall in between 70 to 180 milligram per deciliter. How much percentage of the time that should be, we'll look at the next slides, but I'm going step by step. Level one hyperglycemia means if the blood sugar has stayed more than 180 milligram per deciliter. Level two, if it is more than 250 milligram per deciliter. And of course, these are all called the time above range. Time in range, for the percentage of the time, the readings have stayed between 70 to 180. Now, looking at the time below range, level 1 hypoglycemia is less than 70 milligram per deciliter and level 2 hypoglycemia is less than 54 milligram per deciliter. Now, another key matrix which we should always look at is number of days the CGM was born. So, obviously, 14 days is recommended. This is the usually the sensor uh, lifetime for a, for example, for a freestyle Libre sensor. Then we are talking about the percentage of time the CGM is active. So we want to know how much percentage of the time the sensor was worn, and at least we should have 70% of the data, data from the 14 days is recommended. Then we are talking about the average glucose where we are looking at the GMI also called as glucose management indicator. Now in the olden times, this was also estimated HbA1c, but now if you look at the, all these standard reports, they have removed this and just put at GMI because sometimes people confuse it with the HbA1c. It's mostly a glucose management indicator for the last two weeks. Coefficient of variation, this is the measure of the variability. So a coefficient of variation more than 36% for the readings is considered unstable. So all of them are very important statements and can by itself appear in the exams. Now let's look at the time in range concept and how is it different from uh, HBNC testing. So HBNC testing basically evaluates a single A1C level. Okay. On the other hand, time in range evaluates continuous glucose levels. A1C levels can be compared three months apart. On the other hand, the time and range concept compares glucose fluctuations for any amount of time. 
A1C testing does not capture same day hypoglycemic or hyperglycemic levels. On the other hand, in the daily profiles, we can capture all the glucose levels uh, and see whether it is hypoglycemia happening at what time, hyperglycemia happening at what time. HBNC is less likely to capture impact of the acute interventions, whereas in the CGM profile, so the time and range, we are likely to capture impact of all the acute interventions. And that's why it's extremely important now to concentrate on the time and range concept. So for a time and range, the target is usually between 70 to 180 milligram per deciliter. And of course, we also want to interpret what is the time below and above the target range, as we can see in this bar. Now let's look at the CGM-based targets for different populations and how much is the expected percentage. Now for a typical type 1 and a type 2 diabetic patient, the target range, which is between 70 to 180 milligram per deciliter or between 3.9 to 10 millimole per liter, that should ideally be more than 70%. On the other hand, the level 1 hyperglycemia, which is more than 180 milligram per deciliter, should be less than 25%. And the level 2 hyperglycemia sh should be less than 5%. So less than 25% for the level 1 and less than 5% for the uh, level 2. What is this percentage? 1% of the day is approximately equal to 15 minutes. So when we talk about level 1 and level 2 hypoglycemia here, so less than 70 should be less than 4% and less than 54 milligram per deciliter should be less than 1%. So 1% is approximately 15 minutes. So if you are talking about 4%, that will be 4 multiplied by 15. So that will come around 1 hour. So we don't want them to spend more than one hour of the day below 70. But in different presentations, we see different levels of hypoglycemia. And that's why we need to know the targets for the different populations. So type 1 and type 2, these are the expected targets. On the other hand, for the older high risk, uh, for a type 1, type 2 diabetic patient, but those who are older and high risk, the targets are a little bit more relaxed. So here the time in range or the target range is more than 50% of the times the patient should fall in this range. For the more than 180, it should be less than 50%. For the more than 250, it should be less than 10%. And for the less than 70, it should be less than 1%. And again, in pregnancy and type 1 diabetes patients, in pregnancy, the target range should be more than 70% of the time achieved. More than 140 should be less than 25%. And less than 63, less than 54 should be less than 4 and less than 1% respectively. Now, why this is very specific, 70%. So 70% time in range is approximately equal to 7% agency. On the other hand, 50% year of time in range, that is approximately equal to 8% of the HBNC. And that's why this percentage has been derived to comprehend the HbA1c levels. So that's how the concept is. 70% time in range is approximately equal to 7% of the age. Now, <clears throat> this is for the uh, description of the first part of the AGP report, the part one, as I mentioned. So here is a sample of our AGP report. I've just concentrated on the top part of it, okay? So it shows the data of the patient from 21st November, 2018, to 3rd December 2018. So that's almost 13 days of data. So that's good enough data. As I mentioned, more than 70% is good in my previous uh, slide. So here the CGM is active almost 99.9% .9 of the times, which is pretty good. Again, what is the target range? We already discussed all of this. We should keep in mind that even a 5% increase in the time in range is clinically beneficial. I will talk about this when I talk about examples. So when we do any acute intervention uh, and if we get a difference in the time and range, for example, if the patient's time and range is only 45% and we did some acute intervention and we reduced some doses, adjusted some doses and the time and range becomes 50%. So that means that each 5% increase in time and range is clinically beneficial. So even a 5% increase in time and range is highly clinically beneficial as per the data. Average glucose for this patient, the GMI is approximately 7.3%. So this is the last 14 days, okay? 
this glucose variability in this example is 49.4 percent so that's high because as i mentioned the coefficient of variation or the variability in the blood glucose levels should be less than 36 percent so clearly in this patient there is more glucose variability so we need to try and reduce this glucose variability now look at the time and ranges for this patient you look where he's standing for the target range it's 49 percent for the very high it is 19 percent for the high it is 20 percent for the lows it is four percent and for the very low it is eight percent now clearly number one what we notice is the target range which should be more than 70 percent is only 49 percent the other problem which you can notice significantly is the very lows the very low is supposed to be only less than one person but it is eight percent in this patient the below 70 which is uh, in this low range that has to be below four percent so that's around four percent that's fine but the clearly two main things which i notice here is the target range which is low and the very low which is very very high percentage eight percent that should be less than one person what is the other clear pattern i notice here the blood sugar readings about 250 milligram per deciliter which is level 2 hyperglycemia should be less than 5 percent and what do we see in this patient it's almost 19 percent the level 1 hyperglycemia is pretty okay it can be less than 25 percent is 20 percent so three main pointers here being a problem the very high readings being very very high the target range being lower than 70 percent and the very lows being very very high so these are the three targets we we need to target for this particular patient so this is just a sample example we'll look at more examples as we go forward so as i mentioned how are the tir or the time in range in a1c related so tir of 70 percent is approximately equal to hbnc of seven percent and tir of 50 percent is approximately equal to an hbnc of eight percent what we want is we want more green and less of red so that is how we should rem remember mglr so in this first part of the AGP report, we always want it to be more green and less red, okay? So if we have a CGM, the time and range is usually calculated automatically in the software app of your device. For example, if you're using a Dexcom, it will be in the Dexcom Clarity mobile app. And if you're using a Freestyle Libre, then it will be in the Freestyle Libre link mobile app and the Libre view on the web. And for a Medtronic care link uh, on the web, and Guardian Connect mobile app and for Sensionics in the Eversense DMS. So different softwares, different ways to download the AGP report. Now let's look at the AGP profile part two. And if you look at, this is the second part of that report and uh, it shows a gra graphical representation of the last 14 days blood sugar. Now, if you look at the different shaded areas, this is very important to understand. The dark blue line here is the median. Okay, so that's clear. That's the middle of the data. What is the shaded areas, the upper part and the lower part? So the upper part represents 10% of the data above the 90th percentile. And the lower part represents 10% of the data below the 10th percentile. Okay. Then we talk about this blue shaded area. That is the 25th and the 75th percentile curves. Okay. So again, that is also important to understand how the readings are falling in this particular zone. Now, we'll be looking at some more examples in the next slide. So that will be giving a better idea what this graph means. But this is a general interpretation of the uh, graphical view and to understand how the data is lying. Now let's look at this example. So I told you we'll see with the example what's exactly happening in this case. Okay. So this is a 14 day profile of an example patient. Now look at his median. It's right in the center, the dark line. What is the problems which is happening with this patient? You can clearly see first and foremost, always look out for the hypoglycemias, all the low readings. And what's happening in this patient is dropping down between around 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. and then again around between 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. So in this AGP 14-day profile, first I'm looking out for the low readings. Where is exactly the patient going low? So two times he's going low. 
between 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. on most days of the week and between 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. on most days of the week, I mean, last two weeks. Then look at the high readings. What are the out of range readings? So you can see here around 9 a.m. in the morning and around 9 p.m. in the evening is spiking high. So always look out next for the high readings. So first we look at the low readings and we look at the high readings. Now what is important to understand is that before we sit and look at this 14 day profile, we should always sit with the patient and ask him at what times of the day he is having his meals. Because then only we can interpret this data more correctly. Maybe the spikes are happening when he's having his breakfast and dinner, but you cannot decide that unless you're going to ask the patient. So it's important before you interpret this part of the graph to sit and down with the patient and ask him what times of the day he's eating his breakfast, lunch, dinner. Ask him what time of the day maybe he's missing his meals. Ask him if he's going for exercise, any activity, which could affect the blood sugars as well. So it's very important to correlate what's exactly happening, uh, what time is the meal timings and what time is the exercise in the activity timings. So this was the free view of the lecture. Uh, of course, it's a pretty lengthy lecture now, uh, but uh, or the paid subscribers will be given full access to this video. And if you'd like to subscribe to the lecture series, please email me on uh, my email ID, which is nazirules at gmail.com or you can WhatsApp me on this number. The same number is on Telegram as well. I will leave a link for all my uh, lecture series. So once you get the subscription for the lecture series, even this all new videos will be provided to you all the full length for the free access. So thank you so much. Thank you.